hello there. I want to use this assignment to give ourselves a little bit more practice doing regression, and then also to talk about mediation analyses as talked about in the book. So let's get started. I'm inside of Jamovi, and I want to open a data set. There's three data sets for this particular assignment. And what I want to begin with is the partial mediation data set. The first thing you might want to do is a simple multiple regression. Uh, to do that, I'm going to go into the regression module, say linear regression. And I want to predict well being from deep talk and social ties. Here are my coefficients. If I want, as before, and we can look at the standardized estimates as well and those confidence intervals. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, often when we have variables that have different scales, different variances, we look at the standardized coefficients rather than the unstandardized coefficients. But what I want you to do here is to notice that I've got the estimates of 0.48956 for the deep talk on standardized estimate and 0.61827. Okay, let's go in and do a mediational analysis here. To do that, I'm going to come up here to the top and access the mediation module. If you don't have this, click on that tab in Jamovi and you'll see that you can install that module. So mediation. This layout is pretty much the same as for regression. We are going to be interested in dependent variable of well-being and deep talk being the predictor and the mediator being the number of social ties. And I might be interested in looking at the plot estimates. And confidence intervals and the labels. So this maps onto the diagram that you see in the book. The relationship from deep talk to social ties is given by the label A. Social tie to well-being is the letter B. Deep talk to well-being is C. And here are our effects, the indirect effect traveling from deep talk to well-being is A times B, and the direct effect is simply going from deep talk to well-being directly. And what we can see here now is the percent mediation, that is all of the mediated effect, all of the relationship between deep talk and well-being is explained mostly by the direct effect, and then there's this partial mediation effect, a certain proportion of variability that's due to the product of the, the path going through social ties. Now, if you want these estimates, it's a little bit better to do bootstrap estimates. You can click on that and wait a little bit, and it will go out and do bootstrap estimation, which is a fancy way of saying, making little subsets of the data to get an idea of how the coefficients bounce around on replication. And the reason you do this rather than the standard one is because it's um, not normally distributed. And here we see the values and the confidence intervals. So from this, we'll conclude that the indirect effect is statistically significant. The bounds are 0 0.188, 0 0.35, and the direct effect is significant as well. And that's it. That's all there is to mediation analysis. Notice that the numbers that I got out of this val of the mediation analysis, 0 0.618, 0 0.490, those are exactly the same numbers as I had above when I was doing it in regression. That little difference between 48956 and 490 is due to the fact that the mediation analysis rounds to three digits. But those are really, really, truly the same numbers. So a regression coefficient means exactly what we said in class. It's the question of, is there a unique contribution from that manifest variable? Okay, let's look at a second case. Okay, now let's look at what indirect mediation looks like. We'll go out to our data set, select the indirect model. That will show us these data. If we want, we can do a regression here. And we can again predict well-being from deep talk and social ties. And we notice something interesting. All of a sudden, deep talk doesn't seem to be doing anything directly. Social ties does. Let's look at this in terms of a mediation. 
well being is our dependent variable, our mediator is social ties, and deep talk is our predictor variable. Well, now that we're looking at this, the direct effect that 0.0510 is not statistically significant. We can look at our path estimates, which are again the unstandardized regression weights, except there's a regression weight going from deep talk to social ties. And we can look at our path estimate and the percent mediation. Well, inside of this, that direct path now from deep talk into well being does not explain a significant amount of variation. Notice the confidence interval includes a negative and a positive number. And the z-score at the statistical significance is not significant. So, and the mediation is much smaller. So in this particular case, we would say all of the relationship between deep talk and well-being seems to be accountable by the indirect effect through the social ties variable. And that's the case of what complete indirect mediation looks like. Last, I want to have us take a look at a case of statistical suppression. So before, upstairs, we were talking about the regression, and we can look at our standardized coefficients on that, with the confidence intervals, and say, oh, yes, these standardized estimates for this data set look like this. Let's consider a case of what suppression looks like because I had mentioned before that it's possible for standardized coefficients in a regression to not, when you have more than one variable, to be bigger than one or smaller than minus one. So here's an example of a data set that shows that. What we'll do is we'll come in and do our regression to see these things happen. Here's what will be in our dependent variable and our two predictor variables. It runs. And then downstairs, if I want to take a look at the coefficients and get the standardized coefficients, here they are. Well, this is kind of odd. Look at the standardized estimate for deep talk. It's 1.5474. And normally, you know, we said standardized coefficients go from minus one to one, and they correspond to what happens with the z-score. So what happened here? A standardized coefficient just talks about what a one point change would look like if you increased a predictor variable by one point. What's the z score change on the dependent variable? So, how did this wacky set of standardized coefficients happen? Well, let's go in and take a look at our reliability analysis heat map to get an idea for what's going on. Well, this is interesting. Our well being variable as a negative correlation with the other predictor variable and a negative correlation, a positive correlation with deep talk. And notice also social ties and deep talk have a negative relationship. So it's this mix of positive and negative numbers that's causing us to have the suppressor effect, which isn't what we saw when we were doing the other models. Uh, if we want to explore the data set a little bit, you know, what you would do if you were analyzing the real data set, you know, the data will look pretty much normally distributed. There's nothing influential going on. So the suppressor effect is entirely due to the fact that we have two variables that have a negative covariance but there's a mix of positive and negative effects relating to the criterion. That's all there is. Let me know if you have any questions.